dollar, dollar, dollar. Dirt and money, no soul. Had to go and get it, ain't no time to kick it. Got a stack of flip for my foes. Dollar, 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 dollar. Please tell me you can hear me. Don't turn your back and don't neglect me. Just let me know if you need me. Dollar, 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 dollar. Let me watch out for my partners. Keep my money long, get my team strong. Let me run away from my problems. Yup, what's good, original crew? We're back on the channel with more Mr. Baller, man. We got a requested one. We got top three photos with disturbing backstories, Back part four. Mm. Shout out to Shadow uh, for requesting this. I've uh, been requesting this for a couple weeks. It's just unfortunate we had other requests already ahead of your partner. But we got you, man. We got you finally. Um, I like the top three. I like the three. The, the three and one. Three, the three and one, yeah. Yeah, I like those when we get three stories, man. So, with that being said, we ain't gonna hold y'all. We gonna get into it, but before we do, as always, make sure you check out the links in the description box. Down below. You already know where to go, man. <laughs> you want to first support. All you gotta do is check out down below. Also, if you enjoyed today's video, what? Lock it down with a thumbs up. Mm-hmm. That's mm -hmm. right. Do that. We like those. We like to see when y'all make the, uh, the button blue, right? Or did they change it to green? Y'all double check that for me. Double check that for me. Go ahead, click that button. Click that thumbs up. See what color it is. And then come in in the comment section down below. <laughs> okay. Fuck with the algorithm. <laughs> help us help you. Help me. Help me. Help me. me. All right. With that being said, uh, let's go ahead and get into it. Let's check it out. Let's see what's about. You ready? All right. All right, let's go. Today, I'm going to share with you three progressively more disturbing stories, and at the end of each of them, I'm going to share with you the picture that is famously associated with them. But before I get into today's stories, if you're a fan of the strange, dark, and mysterious delivered in story format, then you've come to the right channel, because that's all I do when I upload three, four, even five times every week. So if that's of interest to you, please tar and feather the like button, and then subscribe to this channel, and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of my weekly uploads. All right, let's get into today's stories. In September 2006, 26-year-old Jody Arias met 29-year-old Travis Alexander at a big business convention in Las Vegas. The two hit it off immediately with Travis... What? Oh, you said, I was just... I was trying to help you. In September 2006, 26-year-old Jody Arias met 29-year-old Travis Alexander at a big business convention in Las Vegas. The two hit it off immediately, with Travis on the same day he met her inviting Jody to be his guest at his company's formal dinner that night. After the dinner was over, Travis and Jody stayed up all night chatting with each other, and the next day, Travis was telling his friends at this convention that he had, quote, found his wife. After the convention was over, Travis and Jody would continue to see each other, even though it was a long-distance relationship. Travis lived in Arizona, and Jody lived in California. But they would meet up, and they would travel and take beautiful pictures and post to social media. It just seemed like they were a dream couple that were so happy together. While the couple's social media posts might have made it seem like they were this perfect couple, Travis's friends began to notice some very strange behavior by Jody early on in their relationship. Jody just seemed totally obsessed with Travis. She could not keep her hands off of him. Travis would be talking to his friends and Jody would come up beside him and literally grab onto him and cling to him. And Travis would try to push her off of him, and she would just come right back and grab onto him. But it wasn't playful and jokey and funny. It was like she literally needed to be holding on to Travis. Jody would get really upset anytime Travis was interacting with a female. It didn't matter their age or their relationship to Travis. It was like she just could not hack any other females in his life. She would follow Travis anytime he went to the bathroom and she would put her ear to the door and try to eavesdrop in case there was somebody else in the bathroom that Travis could have been talking to. She began showing up to Travis's house totally unannounced at all hours. And one time when the house was locked and Travis wasn't even home, she snuck into the house through the doggy door. Initially, Travis's friends just thought it was weird behavior, but over time, they started to feel like Jody might actually be dangerous. And so they sat him down one day and they kind of had like an intervention and they said, hey, Travis, 
there is something off about Jody. Her behavior is just totally weird and it seems like she is just never going to let you go. I think you need to break this off and just find a way to cut ties with this woman. Wrong advice. Women like that, you cannot just step away. You know what I'm saying? You, you know what I'm saying? Think about it. Damn, damn line between love and hate. That should be happening for real. You know what I'm saying? I mean... Female be that obsessive for real. What I'm gonna do? What you mean? Like, what? Well, what you said, breaking ties just like that. You can't. Like, I'm saying with, with like, possessive and, and very controlling right. women like that, it's hard to break off and, and really be safe. Right. I said just like the line between love and hate. Yeah, but you have to do something. You got to do something. <laughs> So what hey, you, like what? That's the reason why. As you get older, you kind of, you know, what I'm saying, you got, you kind of got to watch who you bring around, how you bring them around, and when you bring them around. Because I'm sure she showed you signs beforehand. You know, them type of women you don't bring around family, friends, any associates. But y'all had just met, I and you had moved too fast. You know what I'm saying? So you don't really, and even if, if you already are like this and I get to know you, it's already in you. So it's like, it's a lose-lose. But I'm saying, you broke up with her, you ain't got to be worried about family. Well, she, she might be a stalker. Never mind. That'd be crazy. That'd be crazy. Never going to let you go. I think you need to break this off and just find a way to cut ties with this woman. As they're speaking to him, they hear something outside of the room they're in, which had all the doors closed. And Travis stands up, walks over, opens the door, and standing right there is Jody. She was eavesdropping, and she was furious. And she looked in at all of them and gave them absolute death stares and stormed off. Shortly after this intervention, Travis takes his friend's advice, and he does break it off with Jody, and he kind of moves on with his life. Now remember, he lives in Arizona, and Jody lives in California, so you'd think it would be pretty easy to break up because you're never going to run into each other. And that's what Travis was kind of banking on, that he could get a fresh start and never see her again. But about two weeks after they broke up, Jody moved to Arizona. Around the same time, Travis starts dating a new woman named Lisa, and almost immediately, Jody starts stalking Lisa, showing up at her house, tapping on her windows, and running away. Yeah. She starts slashing Travis's tires. I mean, she was a total menace. Yeah. She was trying to break them up. But a few months after she arrived in Arizona, Jody ultimately packs up and heads back to California in April of 2008. And Travis, Lisa, his girlfriend, and all of Travis's friends are so relieved, they felt like now the breakup is final. Two months after Jody leaves Arizona and goes back to California, Travis misses a really big business meeting. And at first, his friends are calling him and kind of giving him a hard time about missing this meeting, but he wasn't responding. And after a couple of days, his friends decided they needed to go do a welfare check and make sure he really was okay. They go to his house, they open it up, and immediately when they walk in, they see blood on the carpet and they're calling out for Travis. Travis is nowhere to be found. They walk through the house and they discover in the bathroom, Travis's body. He was dead and laying in the tub. They call the police, who come over and immediately suspect Jody Arias, who denies that she was ever there, that she had left, she was in Arizona, that she had nothing to do with this. But during the investigation, they find a camera inside of the washing machine inside of Travis's house. They were able to dry it off and extract the last few pictures that were taken on the camera. The first few pictures are of Jody herself. She's clearly inside of Travis's house. And then at some point she goes into the bathroom where Travis was, he's taking a shower. She takes this picture and then immediately following this picture, she proceeds to stab Travis to death. In May of 2013, Jody Arias was found guilty of first degree murder and was sentenced to life in jail without parole. I'm telling you, see, like that gave me real thin line, uh, thin line between love and hate vibes. You know what I'm saying? Like it'd be a lot of psychotic it's women out there. Let's be real. There's, there's men out there like that too. There's a lot of women out there like that too. Just people, period. A lot of men and women. I'm agreeing with you. <laughs> I was thinking. Because I, a lot of women be like, if I can't have you, nobody can have you either. No, I, I agree ready. with you. I was just a little delayed because I, for some reason I remember her name. Uh, from something. Uh, but anyway... But yes, it's a lot of people, a lot of women, a lot of men. It's a thing like, if okay, you don't want to be with me if I can't have you, can't nobody have you. 
And that's the thing. And, and I'm they, surprised she didn't try to hurt the uh, other girlfriend. Maybe she would have if she was there. She was there. Was she? Oh, you're talking about actually in the I'm house. I'm in the house. Oh, uh, no, I'm saying even, went. I'm saying even like at all, like physically harmed. Like she did stuff, but I'm saying like literally, like you killed him. You, I'm surprised did, she didn't, like, she didn't go after killing him. Well, I guess she would have killed her before killing him. Yeah. Now she literally is like, if I can't have you, nobody can right. because you're going to be dead. Like what the fuck be wrong with like folks, bro? That's crazy. You know how many people you you could have found it's any never that serious. Anybody else in the world probably would have dealt with your crazy. It's ass. never that serious. You know what I'm saying? It's a man that would have the way same way you obsessed about about uh Travis, it's another man would have been there obsessed about you. It's y'all people been out there. Obsessed with everyone. each other, honey. With y'all crazy asses, cause what? Sure. Like you mm-hmm. leave let that man be, man. You could let that man go. Do him. I just, I hate it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because shit like that happens a lot in relationships. You know That's... what I'm saying? Like, people fail to realize when you get, when you decide, <laughs> it's, when you decide to be with someone, mm-hmm. like, you, you decide whatever comes with after this. And maybe it's, maybe he shouldn't call her or say, hey, I found my wife. You know what I'm saying? Because she, she already ear hustling about everything else. She probably ear hustle when you when you call her your wife, no. and some women get so obsessed with that. Oh, I'm gonna be his wife. He already, you know, you call me your wife. You you know what I'm saying? She was just crazy because she was crazy. Yeah. It's it's deep rooted though. Something something is there that triggered that. Yeah. I don't know. It's lack of love from family, we friends, don't know, but something previous relationship, but something made her cuckoo for Coco. By September of 1985, the Nevado del Ruiz volcano in Colombia was starting to show signs of significant activity. The tremors had become so powerful that the citizens of a nearby town called Amero, that was home to 31,000 people, they started to become very concerned. You know, if this thing were to go off, we're only 30 miles away, we'd be leveled. And unfortunately, just a couple of months later, on November 13th, 1985, the volcano would erupt and it would create a massive mudslide that would just devastate Amero. The mud flow covered 85% of this town in heavy, thick sludge, it destroyed buildings and bridges, and it killed 25,000 people. Remember, there's only 31,000 people in this village to begin with, so 80% of the population has been killed by this mudslide. Because of how big of a disaster this was, it took a while for the rescue efforts to mobilize. And so anybody that was on the fringe of being saved, unfortunately perished because no one was there to rescue them in time. And then when rescue crews did get out and did start helping people, there just wasn't enough. There weren't enough people to help. And so hundreds of people that could have been saved were just trapped and no one could get to them in time. Photojournalist Frank Fournier arrived in Colombia two days after this eruption with the intent to photograph the ground rescue that was going on inside of Amero. When he actually arrived in Amero, he was really shocked to see just how completely destroyed this town was and how totally ineffective the rescue efforts were. It was just totally chaotic. It wasn't really clear who was helping who. There were people literally dying all over the place. It just seemed crazy that this was not being handled better. Amid this chaos, a farmer approached Frank and told him he needed to come over and try to help this girl who was trapped under a house. So he brings Frank over to this house that's been completely submerged in water and mud and clinging to a branch is this 13 year old girl named Omira Sanchez that's been trapped up to her neck in water. She's pinned by something in the water. They didn't know what it was, but she's been there for 60 hours. When Frank arrived, he spoke to the other rescuers that were there trying to get her out. And they said that she's been in great spirits and she's been joking about how she doesn't want to be late for school. She's just been a really positive force and we really want to get her out, but you know, it keeps raining. So the water keeps rising and she's already up to her neck and she's just trapped. We can't get her out. Shortly after Frank arrives, Omira went from chipper and lively and kind of making light of everything to most likely realizing that she wasn't going to get out of the water. And so she began telling the rescue workers to let her be, to let her rest. And she propped herself over this branch and she just laid there, kind of allowing herself to pass away. Frank felt totally helpless. I mean, he's looking at this poor girl that's going to die unless they can get her out of the water, but no one seems to be able to do it. And it just seemed totally impossible that we can't just find a way to get her out. 
but it would turn out that her foot was pinned under a brick door and her aunt, who had passed away and was trapped under the rubble, had grabbed her ankle and had died that way. So it was like a death grip on her ankle. And so not knowing what to do, Frank just did what he knew how to do, which was take pictures. And he knelt down and he took this picture of Omira. And very shortly after this picture was taken, she would pass away. This picture would win the 1986 World Press Photo of the Year. When it was published, it was so disturbing that this poor girl was not able to be rescued, that it created an international backlash on Colombia's nearly non-existent wow. rescue efforts. That, that's sad. that photo is very, like, like, hard to look at, you know what I'm saying? Like, looking at the eyes, it's like, all hope is lost. Mm -hmm. Like, you can see, for lack of, you can kind of see the depth in her eyes, you know what I'm saying? Like, you should see it on her face, like, yeah, like this is it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's the sad thing about that one photo. It's like, like just to know that this is how I'm about to go out right here, like this. I hate she was trapped you know the way she saying? was Back. and had no, like, no way to wedge out. No. Nope. And then the fact that her aunt grabbed her and, yeah. like, and and damn and perish like that it's like impossible to even get that because you can't go down there like you know what i'm saying yeah i that's what i'll be like I, I hate it for like those type of countries that like are so far behind and like technology and things like that because they don't have those things set up and those uh protocols yeah. set to be able to all right this is we especially when you know like you have you you have a volcano yeah. an active one at that that could possibly erupt you already have to have protocols set up to hey if anything happens this is how we need to this you know what I'm saying yeah but that's sad man like oh, see, actually so seeing somebody even the first one is finding out that like that's his last photo yeah you can see the fear in his eyes because this looks like he was like like to the turn fuck? around or for her to pull the curtain or to hear he or whatever. Like, the fuck? like why are you in my my space? Especially when I think that I'm I think you gone. gone. Like that but, is yeah, that that was sad. That photo was hard to look at. Like just I just kept looking at her eyes. Like that fast, was hard to look at. Fast, man. Cause her art it was so dark. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. Ed Gein was always a little bit off. His classmates and his teachers recalled him being very shy, but at the same time, having these strange mannerisms where all of a sudden he would burst out hysterically laughing, usually at something he had been muttering to himself. In. <laughs> you don't know who Ed Gein is? For some reason, a name sounds familiar. I'm like, oh, we got this bitch. But when you say... R.I.P. to you, man. Um, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Okay, I was like, the name sounds so familiar, yeah, but Mr. I just... Le Mr. Leather. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Class. Yeah. The school blamed Ed's mother for Ed's kind of odd behavior because Ed would admit that his mother punished him if he showed signs of having friends. So Ed's childhood was incredibly lonely and isolated. Ed's mother would confine he, along with his brother Henry, to their farm. He was basically never allowed to leave with the exception of school. And when he was at the farm, his mother would regularly read from the Bible and would tell Ed and his brother Henry that basically everybody else in the world is evil. We are the only pure ones. Everyone is evil and you should stay away from them. In 1944, when Ed was 38 years old, he and his brother Henry were burning away some marsh vegetation on their property. And at some point, the fire got out of control and the fire department had to be called in. And after they put out the fire, Ed was okay, but they couldn't find Henry. He was just gone. That night, Henry's body was found face down in the marsh in that same area where the burn was going on. He had died of asphyxiation. At first, the fire was blamed, but then authorities discovered that Henry had actually died before the fire started. And so all eyes turned to Ed, who was the only one with him at the time, but there was no hard evidence connecting Ed to Henry, and Ed said, I didn't do it. So Henry's death remained labeled an accident, even though basically everyone believed that Ed must have been the guy that strangled his brother to death before the fire was set. Shortly after his brother's death, Ed's mother also died, leaving Ed alone in this farmhouse. 
Ed began to make some modifications to the farmhouse, not to improve it or to make it bigger and better, but rather to board off all of the rooms in the house that his mother ever used. He basically made them time capsules. He didn't touch them, he just sealed them off. And so he confined himself to a single room in this farmhouse that he did not take care of. And so filth is just piling up everywhere. And so he just kind of lived in squalor in this one weird room. While living in seclusion, Ed became obsessed with cannibalism. He basically spent all his time reading about cannibalism inside of this tiny room in his boarded up farmhouse. And that's how he lived his life for the next 10 years. No one really ever saw him. Then in November of 1957, a local hardware store owner, her name was Bernice Warden, goes missing. When police show up at the store to have a look around, they find bloodstains all over the place and they discover in the register that the last person to make a purchase inside of the store was Ed Gein. So they go to Ed Gein's house to interview him and see if he knows anything about Bernice Warden. And so they're bracing themselves for probably finding her body at Ed's house but they were not prepared for what they actually found at his house. What they find would end up inspiring movies like Silence of the Lambs, Psycho, and Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Basically, inside of Ed's house was a whole bunch of human remains, but not in the way that you would imagine. Ed was taking human body parts and making things like kitchen utensils and bowls, and he was using skin to create seats and lampshades and bedposts. I mean, his whole house was like built of human bones and flesh. Bernice Warden's body was found as well, and she was kind of hung up as if she was next up to be made into some sort of kitchen utensil or chair or table. When questioned, Ed confessed to killing Bernice Warden, but as for the dozens of other bodies that were inside of the house, he claims they were from robbing graves, but no one really knew if that was true or not and they weren't able to ever actually convict him for anything beyond the killing of Bernice Warden. As for his motive, he told investigators that what he really wanted to do, what he intended to do, was build what he called a woman suit that would resemble his mother, and it would allow him to, quote, crawl into his mother's skin. He was deemed unfit to stand trial, and he was sent to a mental hospital where he stayed until his death in 1984. Here is just a sampling of some of the things that Ed Gein made using human body parts. What is not pictured here are things like his lampshade, his seat, as well as his gloves and his belt. If you feel so inclined, you can Google those things. All right, that's going to do it, guys. Let me know in the comments section what you thought of today's stories. Yeah, you, I already know about him. Very sick individual. Uh, I think Ballin gave like a very vague uh, backstory of him. There's other people on YouTube who have covered him and have did like more in-depth uh, information about him. Mm -hmm. You can most definitely go check those out. I have already personally myself, but that's a sick ass individual. You say you have? Yeah, 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 yeah. By egging, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Motherfucker crazy, sick, mm -hmm. weird. That was very vague. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like super, super. I mean, to the super point. vague. Yeah. Yeah, like his his backstory is very like. Yo, like, I know a little signs? bit, like, I knew I, his name sound familiar, but I was like, when you had said, I was like, you know him? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. you know him? But I knew his name sound familiar, but I didn't put it with, you know, what, all of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I knew but, all yeah. of that, you know what I'm saying? All I knew, like, little bitty things, but I think I just know, I never, like, really, like, took the time to watch stuff like mm. you have. I just, like, kind of know things from here and stuff or whatever. But yeah. Now, there's been quite a few people who, who's covered Ed Gein's story and just, like, unraveled the sickness of, yeah. like, the shit he did, like, which was very, like... Super gruesome. Just oh, no, not even, like, super gruesome. Just, like, he was obsessed with his mother type shit. Mm. And it's like, what kind of, like, infatuation you have with your mom, bro? Like... Very weird. Very weird. And then kind of also, I wonder did they were they inspired uh, by the movie House of Wax mm. by him as well? Have you seen House of Wax? I sound familiar. Uh, like you know my, House of Wax you know, is another one that's kind of like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, mm -hmm. and they used to, but they used to uh, take the humans mm -hmm. and uh, and ev everybody. Familiar. You would think all these was wax figure people within, but they was actually, but they were actually human beings who had were dipped in wax. And frozen solid, and they they would be alive. 
and they died that way. I think I have seen it. So, it sounds super familiar. I yeah, think I have. Yeah, House of Wax. If y'all ain't seen that, y'all should check that out as well. But man, make sure y'all spam us up in the comments, man. Y'all let us know y'all thoughts Please and opinions do. about these in the comment section down below, man. But as always, y'all know how it go, man. I do go with the name. Get it. Had to go and get it. Ain't no time to kick it. Got a stack of flip for my foes. Dollar, 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 dollar. Please tell me you can hear me. Don't turn your back and don't neglect me. Just let me know if you need me. Dollar, 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 dollar. Let me watch out for my partner.